Okay, we're good to go. Okay, I'll call to order. Call the meeting of uh, March 17th, 2021 of the uh, Grimsby Advisor, Active Advisory Committee to order. And uh, I understand I should conform the, the quorum and we would need six of 11. And I think we have 10 members, voting members here. So we're good to go. And uh, I would ask, is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest? Seeing none, we'll move ahead to the approval of the agenda. Uh, is the uh, members have any concerns about the agenda? We can move on. Can I have a mover and a seconder for the resolution? You'll have to raise your hand so that I can get that down and then I'll read the resolution to accept the agenda. Dave, thank you. Dave, and a seconder. Thank you, Ruth. And the resolution reads that resolved that the committee accepted the agenda as circulated. All in favor? All in favor, thank you. So the, for those, those of us who haven't been through this process, what I get is resolutions written up and at each necessary point I ask for uh, uh, somebody to move, somebody to second, and then we vote on it, and then I'll hand these in signed later on. So we'll have that every every time there's a resolution, this question will be asked. Okay. Read the question. Ask for communicate with the motion. The motion has passed, and away we go. On the next agenda item is is delegations and since there are no delegations there's no discussion required we'll move along reports under procedural matters and the first suggested item is a round table introduction um brandon were you just looking to sort of get to know a little bit about us we we did this when we first got going right sarah <laughs> I yeah. think maybe for for the new committee members, including myself, maybe just a, a round table, just just your name more than anything, I guess, uh, as a, a name with a face kind of thing. OK, well, I'll follow the order I see here. Do we all have the same looking screen? Because I'm first, so I might as well go with me. Paul McClinican, then Ann. Ann Porter. Ann Porter Bonilla. Thank you. And we're on to Philip. Uh, Philip Brand. Thank you, Philip and Dave. Dave Hall. Thank you, Bruce McKenzie. Uh, you let the secret out of the bag, Paul, Chair Paul? Yes. Yes. Bruce McKenzie here. There we go. And Ruth. Ruth Moffat. Ruth Moffat. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy Richmond here. And another Bruce. Bruce Mannion. We'll take that as Bruce Mannion. Alderman Richley, Richie, we know. Yep. And John. Hi, I'm John Slosky. Okay. That enough about us for now, <laughs> Brandon? Yeah, just maybe we can in, introduce the staff as well. So I, I uh, maybe you can uh, go sure. based on your screen again, I guess. Okay. Ruth, I guess we'll start with you. Oh, you're on mute. Hi there. I'm Ruth. I'm uh, the admin assistant to the Public Works Department. I'm assisting for this meeting. And Thomas. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Thomas Hodgson, uh, compliance manager with Public Works. Compliance. Brandon. Hi, everyone. Uh, Brandon Workman, uh, director of Public Works. And Michael. Hi everyone, I'm Mike, Mike Palomba. I'm the transportation engineering technologist with Public Works. Good, and we got Sarah Sweeney. You all know me. We know Sarah. Hello, Sarah and Donna. I'm Donna Delvecchio, I'm the new deputy clerk. Okay, 
Jimmy and Bruce and Ken. I think that's all of us. Okay. Next item. Okay. The um, resignation of uh, committee members, and I think Sarah is going to speak to this. So I'll turn that over to you, Sarah. Uh, just that we did have two people submit a resignation. One was uh, Sue uh, Regato, and as well, Lisa um, Marlowe also submitted her resignation. Thank you. Any any questions about that, folks? No. And uh, at the end of this, this section, there will be a resolution that will include this item and a few others to accept the resignation, of, to formally accept this re resignation. Um, Paul, sorry, Paul, the only thing I was going to add to is just uh, at this time, we're suggesting uh, that, uh, that we, because we have a, a, a number of members, and it uh, looks like we have good quorum that we wouldn't uh, fill the vacancies at this point, but uh, uh, there could be an opportunity to fill them at, an, at another point in time. Okay. Providing the committee is uh, acceptable to them. Right. And I think, yes, I think we have to have a minimum of seven, don't we? That's the way we're drawn up right now. Yeah. Correct. I think it's minimum of seven, maximum of 20. 20. Yeah. Uh, procedural bylaw, and that's uh, going to uh, defer to Brandon for that. Um, dealing with the functioning of town council and committee meetings. So you're on, Brandon. Sure, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So I just wanted to provide a brief introduction into the town of Grimsby's uh, procedural bylaw. Um, the bylaw itself has been included in the agenda for the advisory committee uh, and for your review. Uh, we are taking a bit of a change in direction with respect to the structure of uh, the advisory committees. Essentially, uh, the town is trying to create consistency in how uh, all of our committees and, and advisory committees operate. The procedure bylaw, the, in effect, uh, the document which lays out the structure for the committee, uh, and probably the largest impact on this committee is the format, uh, as you can see today, in which uh, meetings are held, including you know, how the agenda is prepared, how resolutions are passed, as, as Paul had mentioned, uh, and so on. Uh, so there may be a, a bit more formal uh, formality to how our, our meetings function. However, that said, uh, I think we would suggest, uh, you know, to the members of the committee that uh, we'd like to still make sure that uh, we're offering a, a, a balance between a structured format uh, um, and, and some, uh, some openness to provide collaboration and communication, uh, et cetera. So uh, we're really hoping for a good balance between uh, you know, the, the formal structure and the, still the opportunity for everyone to uh, provide their input. So by no means are we trying to uh, uh, quiet any voices so, or quiet any discussions. Um, uh, and I'm sure it'll, it'll evolve over time as we get more comfortable to the new format and, uh, and the, the video and technology uh, uh, side of things as well. So uh, a member of our clerks team will attend the meetings to help us keep on track and be a resource for any procedural questions. So uh, that, that is Donna. And uh, if there's any questions at any time, we can uh, defer to her and ask for her uh, input or uh, advice. Uh, so in terms of the overall structure of the committee uh, in general, uh, for all of our committees, uh, the Act of uh, Grimsby is considered an advisory committee. Uh, its purpose is to provide advice or recommendations to council through the committee of the whole. Uh, as advisory committee members, you'd be asked to pass resolutions through a majority vote. Again, the chair had uh, mentioned this previously. Uh, those re resolutions form the minutes of our meeting. Uh, from there, the minutes uh, are then reviewed by the Committee of the Whole. Uh, and then the Committee of the Whole essentially makes uh, determinations uh, based on those minutes. They can uh, choose to support or, uh, or uh, poll uh, portions of the minutes, uh, the res resolutions that we've passed, and um, either vote on them uh, separately. Um, so the de decisions of the Committee of the Whole makes are, again, done through their own resolutions, which are passed into minutes which then took to the council meeting at the next uh, next council date. So there's a, a number of layers to the structure and hopefully I uh, clarified that okay uh, and happy to answer questions at the end uh, if there's uh, additional clarification required. Um, so again, hopefully that gives a general understanding. Um, again, over time, I think uh, we'll get used to the formality but still maintain an open collaborative environment. Uh, and I think it's important for this type of committee. Uh, and I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, with respect to that, uh, uh, this area. Any questions, just raise a hand. 
we may have questions later as 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 we evolve. <laughs> that's what I would expect. Yeah, I think that's that's of course fine. Yeah, thank you, Brandon. Um, and back to you again on the uh, uh, act of our terms of reference. So thank you again, Mr. Chair. Um, so where are we? The terms of reference. Um, sorry, I'm working off two pages here. Actually, it says on your notes to me what it, and I might oh. as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so first item is the point appointing our chair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think I'm supposed to read this. My apologies. Uh, I'm supposed to indicate that the per the terms of reference, the committee chair position must be appointed at the first advisory committee meeting each year, which this is. Um, and the maximum term for that is one year, so that gets uh, renewed each year. And the and the maximum for one person is two years. Um, I'm willing to finish this year out to stand for that year, unless someone else really likes this job, in which case I'll step back. Any takers? <laughs> Seeing none, <laughs> I'll carry on for this year. And that'll be part of the resolution at the end of this section as well. So we'll just, you have to vote me in if that's it. Okay. And uh, I th 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 we're talking about some amendments to the terms of reference, Brandon, and that's back to you. Correct. So uh, this, again, this, this one will be very brief. Uh, so we've attached the current uh, terms of reference for the committee, for the advisory committee uh, as part of the agenda. There's some minor changes uh, that will be required uh, to reflect the fact that per, uh, public works departments is participating on the committee in, in conjunction or in cooperation with uh, Rec and Park. So uh, right. we're gonna suggest that uh, Sarah and I and our staff uh, take a look at amending the terms of reference and bring that forward to the committee uh, at the next meeting for uh, input and any uh, comments. And then from there, we would, uh, uh, once we get a committee's approval, then we would uh, pass it along for, uh, for approval. Okay. Uh, happy to take any questions if there are any. Anything on that, folks? No, I think we're good. Okay. I will, I need a mover and a seconder for the resolution around these items and then I will read it. Can I have a mover, please? Anne, you stuck, Anne, I got Anne. Another, thank you, Bruce. Resolved that the update provided by the Director of Public Works with respect to procedural matters will be received by the advisory committee and that the advisory committee acknowledge and accept the resignation of Susan Rigato and Lisa Marlowe from the advisory committee. And given that the current number of advisory committee members exceeds the minimum number of seven voting, voting members, that the vacancies created by the uh, re resignations not be filled and that in accordance with the terms of reference for the act of Grimsby Advisory Committee, the position of chair be opened up annually at the first meeting of the year and that the position of the committee chair be appointed to Paul McClenican for the duration of 2021. Can I have a show of hands all in favor, please? Think I got any negatives? <laughs> then I think I got them all. Thank you. <laughs> Carried. Uh, the next agenda item is the Recreations and, and uh, Parks and Culture Initiative updates uh, from Sarah. Oh, I'm unmuted. How do you like it? So I think I'm going from memory here. I think there were four things I just wanted to bring up. The first one was I know there was some work being done on some walking tra trails and walking routes. And, and Paul, you might even want to speak to that more. And I think Ruth, maybe you were also involved at one point in that, just in terms of, is it something we want to carry as an agenda item and continue to work on with this group or where you kind of wanted to leave that? So it's really more just a prompting to you guys to see what you'd like. Always. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll come. We'll all jump in on this, perhaps, uh, be, because it's been so long. But we did get started on that initiative, and the idea that that stemmed from individuals' requests at uh, at booths we had at the uh, 40, 40 Mile Creek Bay and uh, and others. We had so we had public input saying, "Wouldn't it be nice if the town had some drawn up maps and and or and and uh, route walks?" So we put a couple together, draft ones, and and Ruth, you, I think you had some on the go, Bruce and I did and Susan did a lot too for us now she's left the committee but is that something that would have to be ultimately distributed through the town and we the other was even you know with the social media what what I guess the one of the issues is what can the town do to get those out there once once uh, walking routes were put in place they certainly could be a draw for locals families and, and visitors to town. You could have a tree walk, you can have a historical walk, you can have a downtown walk. There's all sorts of themes that uh, could be put together. Walks that could be challenges, badges for walks. There's many places that could go. It's just, we, if we're gonna put effort into it, we'd like to think it's something that um, fits in with the town's vision of uh, things it wants to offer to the community and visitors. Any other, from anyone else in that group? Bruce and, and Ruth. I saw Kevin's hand. Yeah. Um, Go ahead, Bruce. I'll, I'll talk at the end there. That's fine. Okay. Um, with all the walking and cycling that everybody's doing now with COVID, uh, once COVID's over or even while it's still going on, uh, to promote people walking different routes, it gets people from not just walking Livingston, where you know you're constantly walking by everybody, everybody's moving off to one side or the other, uh, with the different routes where you're going through the back uh, streets where not everybody is going. That uh, uh, it'll make it a lot more comfortable for people, and then uh, we'll also have uh, different routes for people to uh, to know that you you can walk without uh, uh, going the same route all the time. Can you hear me? Do you want me to comment on that? <laughs> I didn't know if Ruth, did you want to add any? Um, sure. Uh, you know, uh, the how many were we? Four of us sat down at Paul's house. Like, I think that was a year ago, Paul, was it? At least. Anyway, and we did put together a whole package complete with you know, how long it was, we had maps, we had uh, whether it was, um, you know, easy, moderate or more challenging, because I think we had one hike up the hill, which we called the Bruce Trail hike. And we had one around the, um, the Grimsby Beach area. We had one that encompassed uh, the cultural places of Grimsby. And, you know, and we indicated too, if it was uh, uh, accessible for wheelchair, uh, we indicated, um, you know, I think they're all pretty much family friendly. Um, and then we thought that it would be great to have some sort of a, I don't know how this would work, but a punch card to, to, uh, to prove that they had done the, the walks or the hikes and then they could then turn that into the town and the town could uh, give a complimentary reward and uh, you know, badges are king. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody will do them for a badge. And, and it, you know, it gets the community out. We're already out, you know, uh, walking the area. We have a lot of new people in town, I think it would, be a great initiative uh, for the town to promote um, and uh, engage the newer residents. Um, yeah, but the the what we had put together, obviously it needs a lot of polishing. It's a very rough draft. We are not, you know, artists by any stretch. So, um, you know, if there's a graphic artist on hand, that's, uh, that's what the, uh, the whole package needed. But I think it's a great initiative. And I know that other communities have done something similar. 
uh, to promote activity and to promote, uh, you know, the places in town. So, you know, I'm all for it. Rather than resolve, we won't resolve it here, but what, what, from a town perspective, what's the best way for us to sort of come up with an approach that, uh, that can, can be delivered? Like, it's fine, we have some good ideas, but we'd like to, like, again, there, there was thoughts of it should be a, available on an app because young people, one, they pick up an app on whatever hikes and away they go. My mind doesn't think that way. I still hold a piece of paper, but that's not working anymore. So that's where we need some thoughts on what can actually, what's what's deliverable in terms of the, the, the town's uh, the technology. And we, we won't necessarily resolve it here, but I think that was one of the sticking points. Was it not, Ruth? I believe. Um, yeah, I mean, if 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 uh, if you know the town, I guess if the town accepts this uh, concept, this idea, and moves ahead with it, um, yeah, I, you know, any amount of technology I think is great. I don't know if it's feasible to introduce an app. I don't know who would be uh, doing that. No, actually, I know somebody that could do that for us, <laughs> and he'd probably do it complimentary. Um, Anyway, you know, technology is, is great because uh, younger people love technology and it could be even set up, uh, you know, like a geocache or, you know, a scavenger hunt type thing. I, you know, there's all kinds of ideas. And you're right, Paul. I mean, we're not going to resolve anything tonight, but no. um, if it's on the table, I think it's a good thing uh, to work on going forward. One relevant one that, 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 that would hit what uh, council has done recently would be to have a tree walk with Carolinian trees identified and plaques put on them. It's a perfect fit with this whole concept of Grimsby being the Carolinian capital. So it, it can be relevant to a whole lot of initiatives and, and as well as getting people outdoors. So I think it's one to work on, but it's uh, rather than sort of come from many different angles, it would be nice to know what's workable for the town. Not tonight. <laughs> I, I can, so I, that, if we keep it on the table then, and I think yeah. we could bring it back, there are a couple of ways I think we could do it. Some easier than others and maybe more than one option fits. The other right. thing that we could maybe look at is we've been doing something called Goose Chase, which is a little bit more of a, you kind of go to a destination and take a picture. I see a few nods, which is cool that a few yeah. of it, but I think we could actually even weave a few of those routes into that. So that might be kind of fun. It won't entirely be the whole piece of it, but it would be something we could link into this maybe somehow, or, you know, reach the end and take a picture at the end of it or something like that, just to give it a little bit more legs. So uh, we can certainly come back with some options, I think, as to how we could do that. Okay. So that'll just get on the next agenda, but at some point in time, we have to sit down in a small group face to face, don't we? I mean, that's how things move along with the, okay. So that's something we can do work on offline. I would hope. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Paul, if I might, <clears throat> I just want to uh, encourage you guys to keep on doing with the, uh, the walking routes. Um, I've had more interest in activities outdoors from, from residents uh, during this time frame than, than obviously I ever have before. Um, so I think it's great. I think that, that Goose Chase would, would definitely help out with the, that punch card idea. And I do think that uh, we, we might not even be able to utilize uh, one of our platforms such as Bang the Table to see uh, once you get a couple of the routes out to see what the community, if there is other interest in different routes, some, some people might have some ideas. But there's a, a great, great ways to um, to communicate to the residents. And I think that a lot of them now are going and looking at the town website and so forth for some of these thoughts and ideas. So I think that it's fantastic um, what you guys are doing. I think that anyway, I think the town would be very, very supportive, uh, especially in these initiatives. So any help that you need, please feel free to ask. And uh, but I know that our directors that are here and our staff that are here, I'm sure we'll have some creative ways to to uh, keep this agenda moving forward. Thank you. Yeah, and if I could just add, just in terms of the technology side of things, uh, I think uh, you know we do have a, a open or public facing GIS system that which provides uh, maps that you could uh, certainly put some layers on there and, and direct uh, residents through our website to those maps to uh, as a way of uh, you know looking at your route on your on your phone or uh, 
or your computer. So I, I think that would be a pretty, uh, pretty simple thing to do on our end. Thank you. Right. Here, Paul. Yes, is that Bruce? No, yeah, Bruce, Bruce McKenzie. Um, going to what uh, Brandon just mentioned, I'm wondering if in the minutes, a link could be provided to committee members um, for that GIS uh, platform that we would be able to uh, look at. And I apologize if it's been sent out before. Um, so that, that's my, my request. Thank you. Sure, certainly we can, uh, we can just send an email out to all the members just uh, with the uh, link to the information. I think if you'd probably just Googled it, you could probably get it too, but we'll certainly send you a link and, uh, and uh, happy to, for you guys to look at it and, and let us know if you have any feedback on it. It is a bit of a evolving thing. It is just new, uh, uh, just late last year and uh, looking at improving it as we go forward and, and the input we, we can get from the public on uh, ways to improve things. We're happy to take that. So we'll, uh, we'll make sure we send that out. Thank you. Okay. okay, Sarah. Want me to keep going? Keep her going, yeah, thank you. All right, um, I am going to share my screen if that's okay. Am I able to do that? Or is she telling me no? <laughs> We're just gonna see if we can assign you as a co-host. Oh. Okay, well, while you figure that out, I'll start to talk about it. Um, I'm happy to tell you that in our budget this year, we did get approved again to do the trails master plan. It was in our plans last year, but with all things as they went last year, we did not get that done. So it is in our, um, it is in the, the plan again this year. We want to get it kickstarted and get it going. So what I want to do is just share with you some of the overview of the plan. Um, just it's in draft right now. It has to go through a various number of hands, but just to get some initial feedback from you about kind of where that, that plan will focus. Okay, Sarah, you should be able to uh, share now. Do you see my screen? No. Oh, yeah. hold on. There we go. Yes. Hey. Okay. <laughs> uh, so hopefully you can all read that. This again is preliminary. It has a number of places it still has to go. But I uh, just wanted to share what the, the master plan will be focusing on first and foremost. So it will be looking at to identify um, and assess our current trail assets. And when we're talking about trails, we're talking about walking trails, recreational bike trails, neighborhood park connection pathways, including non-municipal trails, although we don't have jurisdiction over them, at least just capturing what we have um, and anything sort of similar to that. What it isn't going to be is on-road bicycle lanes and those types of things that will be captured more in active transportation planning um, or, or trans transportation planning. This will also have a big piece of community feedback. So we'll be doing some outreach to the community, asking them what they're interested in, where they think there's opportunities, where there's gaps, maybe where there's places to make improvements. And from it, asking them to recommend a network of trail routes throughout the town. Um, that, that we can slowly work, work towards. Other things is um, I've put it on here, we'll see if it stays, but potential locations for any sort of future escarpment trails that we or escarpment stairs that we could find to connect trails, something I would love to see. And I know I think has even come up among this group before. So having them explore that possibility, recommendations possibly towards official plan policy to help us see these trails get completed. They would be doing some guidelines and some drawings and recommending best practices for trails, including new legislation, and also looking at things such as four season use, which is something we're really looking at right now to make some of our pathways in our community four season and not just three season. And then ultimately coming up with a prioritized action plan that we could try to phase in to develop a, a more comprehensive trail network. So that would sort of be what this project would focus on. And I was just curious if there's any other feedback, anything you think we're missing, anything else you think we should consider. And at least uh, to be a little bit excited about this, because certainly this will come back to your group for some further feedback as a stakeholder group as well to have some contributions as to where we can go. Great. Any comments or thoughts? Uh, Sarah, when you're talking about uh, the possible trails, are you talking about uh, trails like in Centennial Park and 40 Mile Creek. And uh, I know uh, it's already been brought up about the uh, uh, Grimsby by the Lake uh, Trail. 
uh, more things going on there, but uh, uh, to improve trails that uh, are already existing or make new trails? It would be both. Yes. So the answer is yes. All those things that you mentioned, I'm sure would get captured as um, options and opportunities to discuss. I think we also had a gentleman by the name of Rob come before, talked about that railway trail as well. If some of you remember that. Um, so all of those ideas that have come forward would get considered. And part of what the consultant work would be to do is to look at where are our best options? Um, you know, we would be able to do everything immediately, of course, and some of these things can be quite costly, so it may take a very long time, but they would then start to help prioritize where we should focus our efforts on most. Yeah, there's been uh, studies done since back in the 70s on the uh, on trails that would be very uh, beneficial to, to Grimsby, and uh, is that something that would be uh, uh, looked at to save uh, research? Yeah, absolutely. So I've tried to dig up some of those. I probably have some of them, but you know, quite honestly, Bruce, you might have some I don't have. And for that matter, anybody else uh, in, you know, uh, on on our call tonight, um, if there's something that you're aware of, you know, we'll, all those ideas will get to be brought forward. So if you have things, we can definitely bring them forward to the consultant uh, to try to develop that overall network that we're looking to create. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Sarah. Uh, uh, oh, Bruce, sorry. Your call. Bruce McKenzie, yeah. Thanks. Uh, Sarah, thanks for bringing this uh, forward this evening. I've uh, been waiting for this for, 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 for a while now, and, and it's great news. Um, and the, um, the things that come to my mind, uh, one is, and it's probably captured in your list of the overview, uh, is I think it's called wayfinding or uh, the signage. Uh, one of the things I'd be looking for, and this relates to our previous agenda item, the walking routes, is uh, public maps so that if you're walking on one route or trail um, at the entrance to each trail or somewhere central, uh, people can see that this trail connects to that one or that over in that neighborhood, there's a trail. Um, and of course that would be on apps, but it really needs to be, uh, in my feeling, uh, out there with a physical presence and that there's a standardization for all uh, signage to do with trails and that might work back into uh, parks and other facilities, but definitely on on trails, and I'm hoping that this trails master plan, the consultant will bring that concept to uh, the table. Uh, previously, you and I had talked about the, the, the city of St. Thomas, uh, which has done a, a fantastic job with their uh, wayfinding, and uh, and I also note that uh, city of Welland is going through this process right now with uh, public surveys and that. And so I hope that everybody has good success. And my last note is, and it may be covered in part of your overview, is an exam examination of unopened road allowances, especially above the escarpment um, for uh, trail, uh, possible trail development. And as you said, things can't all happen overnight and some are expensive, but I'm hoping that the trail master plan uh, will can identify uh, one, all uh, unopened road allowances and show where the, and identify the ones that are most likely um, or most suitable to be developed into trails. And uh, thinking of the DeFasco trail which ends at the Grimsby boundary up on the Stony Creek Mountain, I think that unopened road allowance that that trail uses in Hamilton continues right into Grimsby. So, and that starts at the Devil's Punch Bowl in Stony Creek. So it's so those, um, uh, at, and I see unopened road allowances as assets 
and I hope the, the plan and the consultant will identify those and make a priority list. Thank you, Chair Paul, for the time. Thank you for the input. Um, I'd like say, to say yes, both of those things are getting looked at. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can I comment? Go ahead, Bruce. Bruce uh, Mannion. When you're talking about unopened road allowances, I've always been one for protecting the uh, unopened road allowances from uh, from uh, the towns giving it away or selling it off to developers or uh, other uh, interested parties because uh, it's something that uh, once it's gone, it's gone. We can't get it back. So if we uh, if we maybe even have it in the in the uh, something in the town plan that uh, unopened road allowances are protected or something like that. That's something I'd like to see. Okay, good. Thank you, Bruce. Okay, Sarah. Okay, one okay. second. All right. I, I don't know if anybody in public works wants to comment on unopened road allowances, but I know certainly typically in these types of trail plans, they do look at those types of things. And of course has to weigh in various other factors that, that those road allowances could be used for, but I, they do ten, tend to get captured as at least points to look at, right? And, and, and potential opportunities. Yeah. Sure, I, I can add, add I, you know, I think that's a great idea. Um, you know, they, they are sitting there unopened, uh, not used. So uh, is there any harm in, in making a good use out of them? I don't think so. So it's certainly something I think we would support as you bring forward uh, through that master plan. Fantastic. So my next one was, uh, if you look at my screen and we've kind of touching just on this is, uh, this has been in the works for quite a while, um, or at least partially is looking at doing some Centennial Park um, improvements and eventually putting in a trail and a pathway around it as well. Um, eventually I know it likely will look at other areas of the full park, but there's some other work we wanna do and some, um, sort of research on our end before we expand the trail beyond this area. So if you're not sure where I'm speaking of, this is uh, Centennial Park, which is beside Nellis Public School and it's the back of the park. Some people wouldn't even know that this exists because it's sort of tucked away with trees quite nicely. It currently has three baseball diamonds on them. They're quite small and uh, Back in the day, they were used a little more. Now they're not so much because they're just too tight. Um, it's not really very easy to play a lot of uh, the sports other than the smallest little ones, uh, but even them, are they're playing elsewhere now. So the, the three diamonds aren't being well utilized. So the idea would be to reduce down to one diamond, make it a better diamond, but then build a walking path all around the perimeter of the uh, trail back here and potentially also look at adding some outdoor fitness equipment or something like that around this area, add some benches and just kind of make it a little bit more of a functional space. So this is something we're hoping to move forward with. Also gonna make sure there's an accessible pathway to the park because there is a bit of a ramp leading up to it and then making connections into the other park areas and even the school fields as well, which kind of exist already, but not so formally. So just wanted some feedback on that. I know it has been discussed for quite a while, so it's exciting maybe to see at least this piece move forward. We have uh, come up with a funding opportunity to help potentially fund this project as well, which is exciting. So we'll be waiting to hear if we have success with that, but wanted to get some feedback from any of you on that. Yes. <laughs> Paul, Paul here. That's right. I was a part of that uh, study uh, with with the uh, the students from uh, the, the university that did did a study on this whole re uh, in, a, in a report. They did a great job. Two council. So that's that's many years ago, but uh, that that's nice to see a bit of that come to fruition. Every now and then, I get an email from one of the students asking, "Has anything happened?" So. You're, this is this sounds great. The other piece of it was linking it around this whole trail around the uh, the soccer field, which I know is uh, Board of Education property, I believe. But at the time, the school people were pretty excited that that might ever happen. But uh, is, is is there in, any di dialogue to making this trail? It, it would be then a good running sports trail. It, you'd get about a k and a half out of it for uh, track and field events and whatnot. Is that in, in any sort of longer term plan? So I have actually raised it with one of our community partnerships contact through the school board. 
Um, I don't think it's something they dive into super quickly. Fair enough. I think I would suggest we do is start here. Sometimes seeing something done and how it would benefit you is an easier sell. <laughs> yeah, and great. Potentially expand it out into their area. Um, so I think it's a possibility, but um, for this specific project, just because we do kind of have a dollar figure we have to work with, we're going to live here. And then, but I do think that is an option for growing out, outside of this, even into the front of the park as well, to eventually extend some pathways into there. We just want to do a little bit more work on what makes the most sense to do that. So I definitely, there's more opportunity for sure, right? This can just kind of be yeah. the start of it in this, in this park. It sounds great. What about the uh, uh, possibility of us uh, uh, metal stairs going up to the to the top of uh, the uh, escarpment so that uh, people that want to cycle out to uh, uh, the uh, the park out by mud uh, can uh, go on the back routes rather than on uh, Mountain Street where it's busy traffic and so uh, people want to cycle more so they would not want to cycle on the main streets. I would say that would be an item that we would want to capture as a suggestion in our master plan and have the consultants help us determine if that could be a possibility down the road. Great. It, it, it's been talked about a number of times. It's come up. So I think it's one of those, it's come up a lot of times. So let's, uh, but I think, you know, there could be some possibilities. It's, it's a little bit tricky um, because at the top there are residences. So um, you have to just look at how you connect and whether you connect into the Bruce Trail, there's maybe some there. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, so for those reasons, I would say if we um, bring that forward as part of that, that master plan as an option potentially for them to help us explore as to what's the you know, feasibility of that. There's an un unopened road allowance that the Bruce Trail goes up uh, from the, uh, the Bruce Trail and then, then, then short, just a short distance uh, down is the uh, Centennial Park. So mm -hmm. it, it is a possibility. Mm -hmm. Well, it's being looked at eh, or considered anyway, and that's a good idea. Thank you, Sarah. But if Any I could just questions? comment on that too, Paul, if you, that's yes. all right. Yeah. So it's, uh, I was waiting to, to discuss about the stairs because uh, I do believe it goes up to the Bruce Trail there. Uh, I had some constituents talk to me about seeing if we can put stairs in and all the rest. So immediately I walked down and went up the, uh, the escarpment myself to connect up to the Bruce trail. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't necessarily recommend it when there's a little bit of snow on the ground, it's uh, <laughs> steeper than you think. <laughs> uh, absolutely. I went out and I uh, went with my wife and we made it no problem, no injuries. But um, I think there'd be multiple agencies that we'd have to look into. And I think that uh, we have some great resources on this committee. And uh, they might be individuals who to talk to um, with whether Ruth or uh, Bruce McKenzie might be able to uh, assist in something like that. Um, I don't know, but uh, yeah, we, anything like that and, and uh, definitely to have it put into uh, the future plans, I think would be a great idea. Great. 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 Any other feedback or thoughts? Uh, one thing I'll just mention, if you're not familiar with the park, everybody says, why doesn't the path go to the back? It's because there's actually a bit of a berm there. And the, the place that Councillor Ritchie is referring to is actually a place where some people still toboggan, so we didn't want to <laughs> interrupt <laughs> the pathway. The other point I forgot to mention is, as part of the funding that we've applied for for this pathway, we are looking to purchase some equipment so that we will be able to make some of our pathways for season. So we'll be able to actually compact snow and make them more walkable when there's snow. And this would be one area we would do it. Southward Park would be another one that we would be looking to do that. So that's also part of this, this plan that we've put forward, just so you know. Jimmy, did you have a question there? Yeah, I know that there's some, some uh, ancient burial grounds in that park somewhere. And this uh, just like, you know, this is a question from ignorance, not trying to like raise the alarm or anything. I don't know exactly where it is or, you know, if this crosses into that at all. Thank you. That That is one of the reasons why we're sticking to the back of the park and not the front is it is more towards the front of the pack and, uh, park and there is a big plaque there. So we do want to do a little bit of research into that space and what exactly is, you know, where we want to be sensitive to before we would do any work more towards the front of the park. 
but great point. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. You got bike friendly status to tell us about, I think. Uh, again, that was more just um, where we sort of left off was talking about our bike friendly status, which has expired. Um, and there is, and I meant to look before today, and I, I didn't to be honest with you. Um, we had talked about potentially creating a bit of a subgroup to work on resubmitting for that bike friendly status. And I just wanted to know if there's anybody on this group that would still be interested to do that. Is it something we still want to pursue or do we want to hit a pause on it? Just thought I would bring that back up for the group. I think Ann and Jimmy were the part of the were two out of three. I'm not sure if there was a third. Uh, so how do you guys feel about that? Ann? Sure, I would love to work on it. Um, we were sort of getting started with it when everything happened with the pandemic. Yeah. Um, I think our hardest part was knowing how to proceed and what to do and having to, you know, looking at the, the checklist of requirements to be bike friendly and the fact that one of our major bike routes is a regional road, not a town road. It, I, I found it a little frustrating and confusing knowing what to do and what to do next. What do you guys think? <laughs> yeah. Jimmy? Go. Yeah, so I think, I think there are actionable things in that bike friendly status that I can do. Um, yeah, that our subcommittee was like even willing to work on. We divided it up to some of some of the duties pre pre pandemic. Uh, it's always been a little bit confusing to me about you know like means means to ends sort of idea. Like I care much less about bike status, much more about like lots of people biking around Grimsby in a, in a safe matter. And I'm like, I guess I don't truly believe that getting bike status is going to have more people biking on. Uh, you know, safer lane ways. You know, it's sort of like uh, if you build it, they will come. Sort of idea. I'm not. I'm not really sure on how the order of operations works with this stuff in general. Like in towns that have done it successfully, like did they do bike friendly status or did they just freaking build really good bike lanes and then the bike status just came naturally because everybody wanted to bike. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Dave, you had a comment. Uh, well, I was just going to say I was one of the three people that was going to work on that. And uh, yeah, we were just kind of getting to the point where we we're going to get together for a meeting when the uh, pandemic occurred and kind of sidelined the whole thing. Right. Um, the one thing I did, I've been when I'm walking around town, I've been taking pictures of different uh, uh, bike rack locations because that was one of the checklist uh, items. So I've got put together a uh, kind of a file with all those pictures, but um, I think, yeah, it, it, the, the list is pretty extensive and there's some items in there that are collaborative, require um, work with the police department. And uh, so I think it's a fairly big effort to knock that off. And I, I think we just uh, haven't progressed because of the situation with not being able to get together, I think. To, to, to Sarah's point, I wonder if it is worth sort of thinking about whether it's, is it worth all the effort? And, and to Jimmy's point, uh, you want to have a safe town, do you need to do all the work to get a recognition for it? Does, does the does this designation do anything for us? What we really want is a safe biking town. <laughs> and so I don't, I don't have a thought beyond that. Maybe we could, maybe we should just uh, reconvene and talk about whether it's a, it's an important initiative important to the town for one thing does the town yeah just like want that bragging rights <laughs> let's go ahead yeah yeah i kind of i kind of feel like there's um a way in which you know like the development of this regional road um, we had that gentleman from the region talk to us about all the phases of uh building uh 81 out and i i sort of can imagine that just adding bike lanes along this whole thing in the spaces is just gonna like steamroll any work that you know our committee would do on you know getting uh, like bike friendly status or something like that because like to me ultimately the infrastructure matters the most for biking around Grimsby. Okay. I also think that uh, uh, with the uh, the town. Uh, keep connecting with the region on, on the status of the bike lanes along the regional roads, uh, like number eight highway. 
that's uh, supposed to happen years ago, and and that's something that's uh, slowly to come. Uh, I haven't seen much of it happening at all. So that's if the town could connect with the uh, uh, the region to see uh, what the what is in the future. Sure, I think that's something we can do. We can actually uh, maybe bring some more information to the next committee meeting about uh, upcoming uh, projects that the region has. Uh, I know that Main Street East, there's a few sections that they have on their forecast uh, for construction. And uh, I believe Main Street West uh, near um, uh, um, end of Casablanca, uh, westerly, uh, they're proposing to do some resurfacing there too. So. Um, whether they're dedicated bike lanes, they may be more of a, a paved shoulder treatment in terms of the rural areas or the, the semi-urban cross sections. And then maybe in the urban cross sections, I think that it would be one of their keys if, if the space permits to, uh, to provide bike lanes. And that's something that we would support as well. So, uh, and, you know, and, and the, the Casablanca road uh, reconstruction project is uh, still coming through, um, which uh, again, will add some bike lanes uh, right from the North Service Road uh, all the way down to uh, Main Street. So there'd be some connect connectivity there as well uh, in, in interconnecting with uh, the existing bike lanes on uh, on uh, Livingston Avenue. So yeah, sure, I, I'm, I'm sure we can uh, bring some more information to the committee just to share that, uh, give you an idea of, of what's uh, what we're aware of in terms of what's coming forward on the region's end. I'm also uh, concerned about the, uh, with the super high school going in, uh, you're going to have students that are going to be cycling uh, from Beamsville, from Smithville, from Grimsby um, along number eight. And there's really not uh, any safe uh, bicycle lanes going to that high school. So if that's something that could be uh, talked to the region about or even the uh, Board of Education to help uh, uh, promote it to the region. Bruce, you beat you beat me uh, to the chase. We actually have that on the agenda later today, uh, oh. later tonight. It's uh, more of sidewalks, but uh, when we get to that item, I'm happy to share kind of what we're where we're at with the status of that. So there's uh, ex some exciting news uh, with respect to that. So uh, I can okay. share that later. So if I may, too, Paul, um, we had a councilor, a regional councilor Furtick, at one of our meetings before, and I may be wrong in this statement, but I believe he stated that. Anytime the region now um, is uh, going to repave a road or expand a road, they're always going to put a bike la uh, lane in on both sides. So just to let you know, so with Main Street East, with the expansion, uh, with the highway that, or with the, uh, the school going on and the reconstruction of how that the road will look, uh, I feel very confident that they'll be putting in bike lanes. Um, I don't know. I can't say that. Uh, I know for Grimsby part anyways. Uh, that they'll have some of that there. And when you look out at Casablanca and you go further down Highway 8, any repaving or so forth, uh, my, my what I recall was that Councillor Furtick stated that they would be putting in bike lanes at that time. Um, now to get back to the point of whether we're looking for bike status, one thing that I, I, I want to just to, to point out is that uh, when we have, a, if we continue on with the group and look for this bike status, it gives, I think it gives us a little bit of a better voice um, from the community as we're speaking from a group of individuals that are specific, speaking specifically to bike safety. And if we can maintain that and move forward with that, I think that it just gives us a little bit of a stronger voice, especially coming from this committee and being supported by this committee, that you might, it might be easier to be heard. And that's why I think that, uh, I think it's a great initiative. I think we should, should continue on, um, but that's just my thoughts. Uh, Paul, it's uh, Philip. Um, I, I just want to piggyback on what uh, Councilman uh, Kevin, uh, uh, Mr. Ritchie just said. Uh, I think this could be a huge kudos to our organization and our committee. Uh, I know it is a daunting list. And I think if we break it up and have actually subcommittees inside the actual list, have the, uh, the two or three people as the chair and us uh, start breaking that apart, it might be a, a better effort for us. But I think this is something that we should try to strive for and try to achieve. So those are my two cents. You're muted, Chair Paul. Can't hear you, Paul.
There we go. A learning process. Yeah, I would say, I think there's some momentum to, to, to move ahead with this, Sarah. So we'll keep it on our list and figure out how to best move, you know, the, how to best move ahead. Maybe we do have to break down, a, you know, rather than just one single group addressing it to a couple of subgroups. But I got some information from uh, a gentleman at Bike Share um, before, shortly before he left. He's actually left now. Um, yeah. That I think might um, make it seem a little less daunting. They don't have to do the entire checklist. We just have to do a few things. And it sounds like some of the work being done in infrastructure might even achieve some of that for us. Right. We can bring some of that back forward next time. And if there is a small group that want to keep uh, whittling away at it, then. I think it'd be worth considering. That, that would be great. Well, Anne, you're you're willing to carry on, I gather. So uh, I think you're willing. And and Jimmy, are you willing to stick with that group? Is it a fit? And Philip, <laughs> you're in. And and Dave. So there, we've got some folks. That's that's good. Okay, that's that's nice to know. Terrific. Uh, Bruce. Sure. Yeah, Bruce, go ahead. Mackenzie. Uh, Thank you, Chair Paul. Um, a question through you to, uh, to Sarah and to Brandon. Um, with the Trails Master Plan uh, coming up, um, I'm going to use the bridge over the QEW on Oaks Road as an example. It's a considered a safe connection between the lakefront area and the south side of QEW. And I see it being part, an important part of a trail network because there's no pedestrian bridge over the QEW. Will the trail master plan, uh, the consultants, will they be looking at um, roadways like the Oaks Road Bridge for, um, in their study? I would say that's probably a little bit beyond the scope intended for this project, but sometimes with these projects, they'll identify other items that should get explored in other ways. Um, the, the intention was more to do sort of recreational trails, so I would say it is probably a little beyond that scope specifically for that. Okay, well, my comment would be is that uh, because the, uh, the town of Grimsby is divided by the QEW and there's such a large population and growing on the north side of QEW, um, then avenues have to be uh, identified for pedestrians and uh, bicyclists to cross the QEW in a safe and convenient manner. Now, I, I recognize that in the environmental assessment that the region did for Livingston, not for Livingston, for Casablanca, that there was going to be some design changes to that intersection to make it a little friendlier for pedestrians and bicyclists. But it's, no matter what they do, simply because of volumes and width of roads, that is not going to be a friendly place. So I, I would like just to uh, put my two cents in is that uh, because there's limited places for safe uh, QEW crossing that uh, the consultants, that might be uh, within their terms of reference for, for connections um, because the people want to get to the waterfront trail. My other uh, so question. Paul, can I, do you mind if I uh, just add to that? Maybe I can yes, answer. Yeah. Go ahead, Brandon, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, Bruce, so just in terms of Casablanca, the, the, the latest design is they're actually proposing a multi-use uh, pathway and uh, with, with signalized intersections and bike lanes. So they are proposing a, a lot of improvements will, which will make uh, crossing the QEW sa uh, safer there. Um, it was, you know, as part of the, you know, the Casablanca study, uh, they did, uh, that was one of the major considerations is how do we get, uh, you know, residents from uh, one side of the QEW where we have all this new development to the new GO station that's coming. So. Uh, you know, we, we can certainly uh, share that information to you. It's on the region's website in terms of what they're proposing. So we can certainly direct you to that just to, uh, to give you a better look of, uh, you know, what they're actually proposing there. Uh, with respect to the, uh, I guess, on-street uh, cycling facility. So 
in our in our budget a few years from now we are earmarking a, a roads master plan update so as part of that roads master plan we will look at things like active transportation on 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 our uh, uh, on our facilities in terms of the road uh, road network so i think that's probably more the appropriate uh, way for us to uh, to handle uh, you know how how are we getting uh, residents uh, on street facilities uh, from one side of the QEW to the other or generally around town. So hopefully that uh, uh, helps uh, answer that question. Uh, thank you, Brandon. Um, and uh, my Chair Paul, my next uh, question or point is, um, and uh, Councillor Ritchie mentioned about the region and uh, Councillor Furtek saying that if roads are rebuilt, uh, bicycle lanes will then be uh, installed. I think there's a lot of low-hanging fruit that can improve bicycling in Grimsby um, before these major road rebuilds are done because we've been waiting forever for Highway 8, Main Street West to be rebuilt. Um, Highway 8 between Grimsby and St. Catharines is one of the worst roads for bicycling. Uh, in the region, and the um, there's no, as an example, there's no signage in town, share, uh, at least I'm not aware of it, where it says share the road, um, where bicycles, um, painted lines are on the side of the lanes, indicating to traffic that bike, because the roads are too narrow that bikes may be there. And if I, I go to other communities and I see a lot of inexpensive uh, signage and lane markings that I think should be uh, considered um, to try to uh, communicate to vehicle traffic that we're sharing the road with bicycles, uh, beware and all those nice things. Um, so I'm hoping that, uh, I guess it's Brandon I'm directing this to and uh, any studies that are being done um, that where are the, the low, the least expensive but easy things to put in to change that atmosphere um, to recognize bicycles on our roadways. Um, the region has not, other than the rebuild of Livingston 20 years ago or so um, in the West End of downtown, uh, the region has not shown any leadership in bicycle safety on the regional roads that travel through Grimsby. Grimsby did a nice job on Lakeshore Road, I believe, um, west of the 40, down to, heading towards Grimsby Beach. So that sets a good example of what can be done. So I, as you can understand, I think it's a high priority and whatever can be done, uh, it would be great because some of those big rebuilds are going to take forever to get redone or get done. Thank you, Chair Paul. Sure, sure Paul, uh, uh, Chair, if I, if I can just speak to those. Uh, in terms of the share of the road, I, I think you had mentioned Lake Street. So we do have a, I think there's a bike lane and a share of the road section uh, where it narrows up. Uh, we've also, uh, in the new Winston neighborhood area, we've put uh, uh, new bike lanes in there again, when we did the reconstruction. Uh, and uh, there's also the multi-use trail uh, on Winston Road that, that goes down to the uh, Hawk Watch uh, at, the, at the end of uh, uh, Winston Road. Um, in terms of the region, so again, like what we would do as, as when we're evaluating whether or not bike lanes can fit is, is we follow, uh, you know, uh, safety standards, the, the Transportation uh, Association of Canada and the OTM books, which essentially uh, uh, define where, um, you know, what minimum widths are for roads and, and uh, widths for bike lanes. So, um, you know, when, when, when we're evaluating whether or not uh, uh, bike lanes uh, could, should be put in is it, it, a lot of the time it comes down to, is there enough cross section or is, this there, is there enough width uh, to do that? So that's why a lot of the time it does default to uh, when we're rebuilding the road, then we accommodate that. So. Um, so that, that's the idea. And, and again, I will bring uh, information for it at the next uh, committee meeting, just in terms of what the region's planning. They have mentioned that they are going to be urbanizing a few sections of Main Street East, which 
uh, I'm hopeful that uh, when it comes to the detailed design that we will see bike lanes in those areas. And, and as I mentioned as well, Main Street West, um, they're doing some resurfacing there. So again, my expectation is if, if they're not dedicated bike lanes, at least they're wider paved shoulders for uh, a safe area for, for cycling. So again, I'd, I'd be happy to bring that forward uh, at a later date and reach out to the region just to reaffirm uh, you know, their, their commitment to, uh, to the bike lanes as well. Thank you. All right. Are we? Yes. Just want to ask Sarah. Anne, okay, Anne. Yeah. You mentioned that you had some new information on the <clears throat> bike friendly status that made it a little bit more clear and simpler. Do you? You said you could bring it to the next meeting. Would you be able to email it to the people on the committee? Because yeah, I wrote that. Yeah, I, I wrote the four of you down. I don't remember. I don't I think it did occur since our last meeting. So I will send you what they last sent okay. me so you can uh, review that before the beginning and see what. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Are we OK? Then we're going to. I need a move by and a seconder to resolution for, uh, with Sarah's report. Thank you, Dave. And Bruce Mannion. Resolved that the verbal update provided by the Director of Recreation Facilities and Culture regarding recreation parks and culture initiatives, namely walking routes, the trail master plan and bike friendly status be received by the advisory committee. All in favor. Thank you. Okay. Da, da, da. Back to the Public Works Department, an initiatives update from Brandon. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Paul. Uh, so just a couple of uh, initiatives that I thought would be uh, nice to share with the committee. Um, the first being uh, connectivity improvements at the uh, end of Main Street. So. Uh, Ruth, is it possible that you can uh, make me uh, co-host so I can share my screen? Oh, I am? Okay. Let me see if this works. Okay. Got to find the windows that's open. Close that one. Just bear with me for a second here. I apologize. Uh, there we go. Sure. Can everyone see that? Yes. Right. Yes. Okay, so um, the, uh, as you know, the new high school is uh, being constructed uh, um, uh, shortly. Uh, so I'm just showing an aerial photography, a map of uh, the, this is the uh, Lincoln uh, Grimsby boundary. Um, so the high school is kind of just gonna fit in, you know, this area here. Right now, the existing sidewalks end at uh, Iroquois Trail. So here's, uh, let me see if I can take a layer off here. So you can see the white lines here are the sidewalks, ends at Iroquois Trail. So as part of the high school uh, uh, construction project, the school board will be creating a sidewalk or installing a new sidewalk on the north side of uh, Main Street uh, from Iroquois Trail all the way to the, uh, the east entrance, so the far entrance of the, uh, of the high school. Uh, and also the town has been in, in, in conversations with the region and uh, the Catholic school board at uh, St. John uh, School uh, with respect to providing some form of uh, a sidewalk on the south side of the road again to provide uh, sidewalks uh, connectivity to uh, this from the school to the urban area. So again, the sidewalk here kind of ends at uh, just at the town limit. Uh, so the idea is there is we'd be extending the sidewalk on the south side. Uh, all the way to the to the uh, west entrance of the school. Uh, we actually, the town and, and Lincoln are in partnership uh, because this uh, benefits both the municipalities. We're in partnership with the region, uh, and uh, we are currently seeking uh, you know a grant funding to help pay for that. So, uh, with respect to the bike lanes, uh, at the time they are going to look at uh, um, how how they can make uh, if there's an opportunity to provide uh, safe on street uh, cycling facilities or. Uh, some some form of uh, maybe a, a multi-use pathway. 
uh, keeping in mind that there is a, a big ditch on that side of the road, on the south side of the road, which may make uh, you know the, the it difficult to provide a, 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 a enough platform for a sidewalk or a multi-use pathway without urbanizing the road. And I'm not sure the urbanization is currently, uh, and what I mean by urbanization is curb, curb and gutters. Uh, I'm not sure uh, the urbanization is currently on the on the region's list uh, in terms of their capital projects, but I know uh, I'm pretty sure east of um, excuse me for on Main Street East uh, from the Gr Grimsby boundary further to the uh, east is um, or sorry to the west is uh, is on their list of uh, projects coming forward again. So I, I, I can share that with you uh, at the next meeting, uh, kind of what we've heard so far from the region about those projects. Uh, and then the second item I wanted to share is the Gibson Street Bridge. So let me make sure. I... I'm just going to go back to share and then show you this one first. So this is, uh, you know, as you, as you know, uh, Gibson Street Bridge uh, was closed. I think it was almost a year ago now, it may have been longer, um, just re re with regards to uh, some structural issues in terms of rusting of the, the structure. So uh, as a safety factor to keep the residents safe, we, uh, per the uh, engineer's recommendation, we decided to close the bridge. Uh, so staff uh, have, uh, in support with council, have uh, brought forward a, uh, a, a design for a new bridge uh, in, in across the, um, uh, across the Gibson Street uh, uh, 40 Mile Creek um, uh, road allowance uh, and creek. Um, and uh, essentially the design is a, 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 that we're looking at is a aluminum bridge with a, a IPA decking. It's a, a Brazilian hardwood or a South American hardwood. Uh, and I'll show you another picture as well. And then this would be the, the picture at night. So, um, you know, we're, we're uh, some of the things we're considering as part of the design is a, a wider structure. So I'm not sure if this is the exact width, but uh, it will be wider than the existing one, again, to provide accessibility, uh, as well as uh, when they are constructing the new bridge, uh, they're going to be designing the east end of the bridge to, there's currently some uh, two or three steps there. And the idea is we're going to try to uh, uh, adjust the bridge so it's a, more of a ramp at that end rather than a step. So again, to provide uh, better accessibility um, to the residents uh, um, across the bridge. Uh, the other item is uh, you can see here that there's uh, this bridge is, is uh, has a LED lighting underneath the handrails, um, soft uh, white lighting, not not too. Uh, uh, doesn't stand out too much, but is a, a, a nice feature to provide safety uh, to pedestrians uh, in the in the evening as well. So that may be something that we're look, looking at as well. Um, and then in terms of the timing, so again, we've applied for funding through the province uh, and the federal government for grant funding uh, to help uh, fund the bridge. So uh, we're waiting for uh, to hear about that uh, application. Um, and uh, essentially, if everything goes as planned, we'd be looking at uh, uh, having the, the bridge hopefully constructed and in place, uh, you know, by late fall in, in 2021. So um, excited uh, that to, to get that bridge reopened. Uh, you know, it's a bit of an eyesore now with the with the uh, plywood there saying road or uh, sidewalk clo or bridge closed. So it'd be nice to, again if we could uh, get that open. So. Uh, so those are the two items uh, I wanted to share and uh, happy to take any questions if there are any. Um, Ruth, go ahead. Ruth, Ruth Moffat, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a very nice looking bridge. And uh, I'm sure that the residents in the area and the hikers that hike the Bruce Trail will be appreciative of <laughs> it. However, I'm... I'm uh, wondering when uh, some attention will be paid to uh, the, the situation down at uh, the Pump House Park and the bridge that has been closed across the 40 Mile Creek um, at this end of town. Um, I think that bridge has been closed to pedestrians for, I'm gonna guess, four or five years, maybe. 
And uh, there's no indication that uh, there's going to be any movement down here. And we feel that it's unfair that uh, the Gibson Street Bridge, which has only been closed a very short time, uh, should get a new bridge before this um, situation down here. That's Sorry. it. Do you want to speak yeah. to that? Okay, Sarah. I can speak to that and I agree. It needs attention. And I was there on Sunday and the people that are down there, there's a ton of people down there. And I grew up in that neighborhood too. So I do relate. I biked my bike all along that path quite a bit. Um, so we did look at it again today and I can tell you we are escalating that work. It got um, pushed back and kind of kicked around a bunch of times for various reasons, but we are where we are. And I think going forward, there's, um, you know, we really do need to get that taken care of. We are hoping that we may be able to come up with a simpler solution than complete replacement because it just gets into quite a lot of <laughs> complicated matters. But what we're doing right now is having it, um, having it evaluated more thoroughly and exploring what our options are, both looking at, you know, is there something we can do in the shorter term to continue use while maybe a longer term solution looks, we, we look at, or what, what are our options? So I can tell you, I know the wait has been long, but I, I, I can assure you, we did talk about it at length today. And there is some plans in place to really look at what we can do, because I, I recognize that it's, it's amazing how many people travel across that. A lot of people don't necessarily even know it exists, but those that live in that community, I know use it very heavily. The number of people on it, as I said, just even when I was there on Sunday uh, is, is quite significant. Uh, they're also gonna be improving that boardwalk. So um, we had a contractor down there today, gonna do some carpentry work to repair the boardwalk as well. So I'm hoping that can be done actually in very short order. Good to hear. Stay tuned. I'm very glad. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's very underappreciated, I think, and overutilized. A lot of people, especially now, a lot of people are going down there. And it's 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 a wilderness down there. I mean, it's wonderful. Um, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. It is a unique and really uh, beautiful spot that I think we definitely need to give some real strong attention to. So stay tuned. No, Bruce uh, Mannion. Yeah, Bruce yeah. Mannion. Uh, the bridge that's going to be taken out at Gibson Street. Uh, I've looked at it, like, and other people have looked at it that have a background in uh, uh, me mechanical, uh, like welding and um, um, mill writing and stuff like that. Uh, think that it's something that could be used in the down by the uh, uh, Ontario Street uh, bridge to replace, replace the bridge. It can be just moved uh, and then put on the ground and then repaired to, to standards and then uh, used there. Uh, Do you want me I to speak to that, Sarah? Be, uh, um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> So Bruce, uh, that's a good point and, and uh, has been brought up previously. There's a couple of, uh, um, I guess, limitations with that is, is uh, one, the, the current bridge and uh, the form that it's in is, again, it's, it's corroded in the bottom. So um, the, 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 uh, in order to remove that bridge and bringing in a new bridge and try to retrofit or fix it, uh, I think you'd see the costs are actually probably more um, reasonable to uh, just replace the bridge with a new one. So. Um, in terms of the, uh, like, like Sarah had mentioned, if, if we're looking at putting a new bridge in, whether it's an existing structure and, and relocating it, it gets into a whole new level of approvals with the conservation authority and uh, the fact that it, it requires an environmental assessment and, and things like that. So it, the scope comes from a, a repair of an existing structure, uh, uh, the existing 40 Mile Creek Bridge to a a replacement or a new bridge, then it, it again, it opens up a whole new ball of wax that uh, that could be difficult. Uh, so those are kind of the, the two points, uh, you know, to, to hopefully address those yeah. questions. Yeah, see, I'm into recycling. So that's something that uh, I, and being in, in the mechanical field, I, uh, I can see that it's something that I would even be able to repair. But uh, as you said, it's a lot of, uh, background in it that uh, uh, it'd be difficult so
think you're on mute again, Paul. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think we can move ahead. No more questions. Thank you. Same. I need a motion to uh, uh, accept the report from the uh, uh, Public Works. Can I have a mover, please? And. And a seconder. Give me a seconder. Ruth. Ruth, thank you, Ruth. All in favor? Good, thank you. Carried. I should have read it. Resolved that the verbal update provided by the Director of Public Works regarding Public Works Department initiatives, namely Main Street East Sidewalk, connectivity and the Gibson Street Bridge be received by the advisory committee. We just accepted that. Thank you. Other discussions items, and that's back to you, Sarah, on the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Frisbee Golf. Uh, me or I think Anne wanted to speak to it. It, it. it says defer to Sarah. So if you want to defer to Anne, that's uh -huh. fine too. <laughs> I'll talk a little bit about it. Thank um, you. We brought this up last year when we were still meeting. And it turns out that a few years previously, somebody had proposed to the town council a disc golf course at Centennial Park. Um, there was a plan drawn up and everything, but then the person who was basically the motivation behind it all moved to Victoria. Um, in the meantime, after bringing it up, I saw that there was quite a bit of interest in having a disc golf course in Grimsby. So I've done some, some investigation and, and talked to different people myself. I spoke to the executive director of the Ontario Disc Golf Sports Association, and uh, he's willing to help with, with advice, support, a lot of different steps that would be required to have a disc golf here. Um, a disc golf course would be a really good addition to our town's recreation. Um, it's an outdoor sport. It's very low cost to build. You can probably have a disc golf course put up in one day for less than $6,000 done. Um, it allows a lot of people to participate and it's not expensive to participate in disc golf. All you need is a disc or a Frisbee. Um, it's a really good, it's been really growing in the last year because it's a good outdoor sport where people can keep socially distant and still participate and be out and about doing an activity. Um, and I found out this week that the Ontario Senior Games has actually added disc golf as a sport for the Ontario Games. So it's really growing. Um, I do believe that the plans, I, was, I talked to um, Chris Lowcock, who's the head of Prodigy Golf in, in Prodigy Disc in Canada, and he also knows our plan that was brought up a few years ago. Uh, the two people I spoke to both think the plan that was proposed a few years ago is still workable. Um, one of the things that made us hold back last year were those paths that you talked about, Sarah, and the paths aren't there yet, I guess, are they? They're, they're on paper, Sarah? The, the paths, sorry? When we were talking about... The Daniel Park? Golf at Centennial Park, you said they were designing pathways for the park and the concern was waiting to see where the paths would be so that the Frisbee throwing wouldn't interfere with pedestrians using the path. So I just, I think that was the holdup last year why we didn't go forward with it. And I'm just wondering, would it be possible to still, because you've got the plan now where the paths would be, um, what would we have to do to be able to get this done? <laughs> Right. So I think for me, one thing that would be interesting to do is to talk to these people again and make sure um, that we're picking the best location for it and weighing that out and maybe even doing a bit of community consultation around it at some point in time with mixed use. So I do think there are some steps we would need to take. Um, I also, as, as Jimmy mentioned earlier, is some, some history to the front area of that park. And I do want to make sure I really fully understand some of that as well. So not that <laughs> to add more steps to it, but I think there are a bunch of pieces to look at. I do think one of them though, really is, you know, I do think disc golf is, is great and has a lot of value. Is there any other location that would be better? Anything else that we can find? Like just maybe 
we immediately with this project, it kind of got zoomed in for a specific park, but I, I wonder if it would be worthwhile to just zoom out briefly. And is there an, any other location that would suit this better? And if, if the contacts you've made are willing to even have that conversation with us might help. And I, again, I do think if we were really serious about pursuing this at some point, I would be suggesting we do a bit of community outreach. We can use our bang the table, which is our engagement platform as well just so that um, we kind of get the community's voice as well as to how they feel about this in certain spaces. So I love the idea. I just think we have to do a bunch more steps and kind of, as I said, zoom out maybe just a little bit as well and see if perhaps these people will lend some expertise in terms of any other locations that might be um, even better suited than, than Centennial Park could be. I think Centennial Park's a bit of a tight fit. It could work, but you know maybe we'll find something that's better. I don't know if there's any other thoughts in the room. Well, I think one, um, Chris Lowcock, who's the head of the Prodigy Golf, Prodigy, Di sorry, my clock is ringing, my app, I can't stop it. Um, he's the head of Prodigy Disc. Uh, he said that he spoke to Andrew Leyland, who did that plan originally a few years ago, and that was actually drawn up together with the head of the Ontario Disc Golf Association. I don't know what the conversation was then, why they selected that. What I was told uh, this week was that the, the original layout flows really well, that the terrain and the topography of the park make for an interesting disc golf course. Um, if you've looked at any of the, for example, some of the disc golf courses that Prodigy has built, they've built uh, the one at Bronte Creek Park, they've built the Fireman's Park, that's an 18 hole course in Niagara Falls. They've done Green Lake Sports Complex in Paris, which is the most used course in Ontario. Uh, St. Thomas, Tottenham, New Tecumseh, and Guelph. So they've built a lot of them. Uh, what he offered to do, he suggested that if we could schedule a walk through the park, looking at the plan that was originally done, um, and maybe meeting with yourself or with Brandon and anybody else from our Act Active Grimsby committee to kind of take a look at the park with the plan to see how it flows, um, that might be a first step that he suggested. Do you think that would be a good step? Yeah, we can certainly have the, the conversation and see where we go and explore again. I think maybe just other options, maybe even reach out to a few other locations and see what we can come up with. But I am curious to hear thoughts from the rest of the room on this. Any any thoughts, concerns, like it? Well, uh, 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 Chairman Paul, I'd like uh, to address this through Sarah. I think this is a wonderful idea uh, with COVID uh, we're finding more and more people are looking for outdoor activities and we're hearing more and more that other communities are embracing this and I actually uh, you know I really want to support Anne here I wish we would have had this done last year I think it would have been a great driver for our community and whatever our, we can do to move this forward I'm all in I think it's a great initiative by Anne and uh, I strongly encourage it as a committee. Any other thoughts on that from our group? at all. Ruth? Ruth Moffat? Yeah. Yeah, I agree that, um, you know, it's a wonderful idea to have an activity and we're getting pickleball courts. I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled about that. Um, but I think, though, that uh, some community outreach, particularly uh, the people that live in that neighborhood uh, around Centennial Park, uh, they may want to weigh in on whether or not they want to have that in their backyard. And, um, I, and I agree that, that there could potentially be another spot in Grimsby, perhaps Southward Park even. I mean, there's a lot of space up there. Um, and I think that those, those avenues should be explored before we uh, drop uh, disc golf into Centennial Park, particularly if there are other things that are going to be slated for that park. Um, yeah, explore other options. And I'm not sure when that report occurred. Do, do you know when it occurred and how long ago? Um, Sarah would know. It was it probably three years ago, I think, something like that, two to three years ago. Yeah, probably three at least. It was quite a while ago. Um, so it, it was at that point still pretty exploratory in terms of conversations. Um, it, you know, I, again, I think there's a lot of interest around it, but even then it was, you know, do we look at any other options and 
And again, that community outreach piece, we'd have to do regardless of where we put it for sure. Yeah, I think, I think um, some of the considerations for disc golf courses, if you visited any of them, is to have a varied terrain, to have forests, to have hills, to have, you know, field, not, not big fields. The problem I think with Southward Park is it's basically a farmer's field and it would be really hard to make a creative disc golf course on an open space without variety and terrain. Um, there's a small little forest there, but it's not very big. The other thing that uh, most of the other disc golf courses have found is that it brings tourism into the town and it brings people in to visit the local businesses. Most people who play disc golf always put together lunch with their golfing disc golf buddies uh, as part of the, the outing. And I think if uh, people were going to a place like Southward Park up there, they may never make it to the downtown Grimsby merchants <laughs> because there would be no reason to. Um, I think having it within town, um, even the schools I know in, in uh, Oakville, some of the schools actually go out to the disc golf courses as part of their phys ed program. Um, so you want to have it in a place where it's accessible to people in the community without having to get in a car and drive several kilometers that, that kids could hop in their bike and go or schools could take advantage of it for some of their programs. But yeah, I, I don't know, what would we do next then? What would be the next step to make a list of possible places? Or I don't know. I just, basically I thought this looked really good and why reinvent the wheel? And I assumed this was all done three years ago. Mm -hmm. How much room would you need to make a, a disco, disc park? It doesn't take up a lot of room. There was a, I can send that PDF. I sent it to Sarah, the PDF. You sent it to me from three years ago. It doesn't take a lot of room. <coughs> it's basically you just have the T and then you get to the, the target. The target is just basically a basket that's, you know, drilled into the ground and, and put there permanently with concrete. And that's all there is to it. It's just the, the T is nothing. It's just usually a little sign. Um, some parks have a little bit of a platform for the T, but a lot of parks don't. So you just basically have a sign that says, hole one t t1 and then the, the the targets it doesn't really interfere with the park i went i went through i was on a trail uh, a few weeks ago and uh i the first time i came across a, a disc park and uh where were you actually it was quite extensive there was more than just one uh, uh basket oh yeah there's well we were proposing for for here nine holes which is a a small disc golf course. Um, yeah, a lot of places it, have 18. It was all over the place, yeah. Um, I guess the biggest concern that I, I see is, is to be able to meet with the course people who can design these courses safely. And with, for example, Sarah or people who know where the path it would be, because you don't want to have between the T and the target, you don't want to have pedestrians, you know, frequently going by or, you know, mothers with baby strollers and things like that. So you sort of try to design the course so it kind of skirts around the outside areas of where most of the activities are. That's why he suggested meeting with some people actually in, at the site. Jimmy? Jimmy Go ahead. I got an idea. Um, <laughs> though I don't know if this is opening up more, more like hands of worms in terms of like the competing interests. So yeah, I, I like, I, I played disc golf, full disclosure. Uh, I typically play at Christie Lake Conservation Area or um, uh, what's called Centennial Gardens, I think is the name of the place in St. Catharines, kind of along the creek there. Um, yeah, super fun, super cheap, super easy to set up. Totally, like, I think Grimsby can and should have something like this, and it's a slam dunk for our committee because it's, like, rel relatively cheap to do. Um, I wonder if, I don't know, maybe I'm thinking about the Christie Lake uh, Conservation Area. I'm wondering if, like, the Beamers... Beamer's Falls conservation area would fit at all, or if this just gets into like a whole like mess of weeds with um, escarpment commission or something like that. But I, I feel like I'm Christy Lake must have handled some some of the same stuff. Like, um, so it satisfies some things like variety and terrain and playing disc golf is really fun when you can do it in treed areas. And uh, the way it's implemented at Christy Lake, it's not like they have to deep forest swaths of things as, as if it's a traditional golf course. You actually just play through the trees and they clear out little little spots that are, let me think, they're probably like maybe 
kind of like 10, 10 by 12, kind of like bedroom sized areas where you can put a little, a little tee off area and then, and then toss, toss down the course. Um, and at Christie Lake, it combines it with, you know, some parts, some parts intersect trails and some parts are just like kind of go off into the far corners of the park where it's, where the holes only. But I feel like if it were possible, maybe uh, beamers would be some sort of compromise between tossing it out to southward where there's basically nothing interesting to throw a disc around and, and not having it completely removed from, you know, downtown and, and everything else. So maybe that maybe that could be a happy medium. Like there might be something to look into there. It strikes me as uh, like a place where I would have lots of fun playing disc golf. Uh, could be an area of interest, as you said. It's uh, we don't own that, so it's a little trickier. But it certainly can be uh, something that gets explored as possible options to look at. I'm talking. I'm uh, thinking more along the lines of uh, interfering with the hawk watch, uh, which goes from March till May. Uh, it would disturb the uh, uh, bir the bird uh, uh, count, and uh, plus the uh, the trails that go through the beamers area. Um, I think it'd be difficult to uh, avoid people walking it because there's. I I know myself. I I up there quite a bit and. Uh, uh, the disc golf would uh, certainly uh, uh, worry people about uh, like walking while they're throwing the discs around. Well, I think that's right. part of the design is, sorry, but I think that's a major part of the design is planning where you shoot from and where the target is. So it's not interfering with other people. If you've ever been to Toronto Island, yeah. amazing miniature golf course on Toronto Island. And I mean, that place is used immensely every path every little roadway on Toronto Island has got people and bikes and everything and yet there's one of the one of the most popular just golf courses there but it just kind of weaves around and behind in places where people aren't using you know aren't, aren't walking. Sarah is there a best way to move ahead because uh, I, I think there's a lot of things to be thought about here public safety and public acceptance seems critical so we'd need to identify areas where that could either be resolved or at least identified uh, you know what the problems is there is there a best next step from your perspective. I think the best next step is to walk away from this and just see if we can explore any other op location options that would be good. And we bring those forward as an option, as options, um, no matter how we would proceed. I do think, as I said, I think a lot of people agree that it's an interesting um, activity. It's just where's the right fit. Mm -hmm. And if we think collectively we've come up with something good and there's a lot of interest, then we would have to go down the other path of making sure we can support it and fund it and community consultation, et cetera. But I think it starts with let's let's just, as I said, zoom out just a little bit. Um, let's explore a few other location possibilities and maybe weigh those out as in terms of other uses and function and then decide how we would want to proceed if we do. Does that make sense to everyone? I think Ruth has a question. Sorry? Yeah. Um, I just had a thought that, that perhaps down at um, the 40 Mile Creek Pump House Park, once it gets all... Uh, renovated I mean there's lots of bush in there there's you know once the boardwalk gets finished and everything we could go in and out of the trees and there's a hill and that could be a good spot for it mm -hmm. it's out of the way and yeah but close enough so we'll do some exploring for locations but I guess the challenge to all of you as well is um Ruth that was a great option to to look at and if if any of you think of others send them along and we'll see what we can come up with. Everybody okay with that? We have a resolution to, and that we are resolving. Okay, can I have a mo mover? Give me a mover <laughs> on a resolution to address that. Thank you, Ann, one more time. <laughs> and a second, thank you, Jimmy. Oops. Resolved that the discussion item regarding disc golf be received by the advisory committee and that the item be tabled for further discussion by the advisory committee at the next meeting. All in favor. Thank you. Okay.
The next item on our agenda then is is uh, resol further resolutions. There are no for other resolutions, so that's not a discussion item. Uh, next one is correspondence, and there's no correspondence that I'm aware of. Anyone have correspondence? Then nothing to be discussed. Oh, if I, if I just could, I know it's, uh, I apologize. Um, it's been a long time since we all met. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I don't want to put any more work on our staff or anyone, but I'm just, uh, I'm just curious, um, Director Sweeney, if maybe we could, to this group here, send an update as to uh, some of the, the park renovations that we're doing, just uh, with the emails of, that you're already sending, if we might just be able to update these uh, the citizens here, to let them know what, uh, I believe, Cindy Park's on, on the schedule to, to be and just, just an update for them so that they know. And so if they're out talking to people, people are aware. Yeah, I can do that for sure. Thank you. I can just touch on that briefly since Councillor Ritchie raised it. Um, so we do have two playgrounds that we had, we funded last year and they're gonna be installed shortly. There'll be two, maybe three new ones this year. But part of that work is once the playground's installed too, is we're gonna try to do some outreach to that immediate neighborhood and get their ideas for what else maybe suits that park. Maybe it's pathways, benches, trees. Um, so we can bring some of that to you guys as well. And you guys can share some of your thoughts as well, but we're really hoping to get into those um, people that reside in those immediate areas and get their feedback as well. But I'm happy to share that further for sure. Uh, Thank you. One, uh, one question about the, uh, the parks. Now, when you put a park in, now, all the discussion about Carolinian forests. Now, are, are, are there going to be tree planting of Carolinian trees that uh, are, are going to go on? Uh, and could the community get involved in that? Uh, yes. So uh, they, for the most part, our team has been planting native trees in parks for the most part <laughs> for the last few years. Now we will be exclusively if we weren't before. Um, so there will be some tree plantings, you know, a lot of the parks may not take on a whole lot of extra trees because they do want some open areas to play whatnot as well, but certainly that is something that we'll be looking at and again getting a bit of community feedback on that. So um, there are some trees that I, we're planting I think in the coming months as well, some outstanding from last year, and then we're also doing some additional tree planting we're looking at into the fall as well. We've been actually working with Bruce McKenzie on some of that stuff as well. So um, yes, there are some tree plantings. Uh, and why I'm saying get like uh, because we're active Grimsby it's not just walking and cycling um, it's also like we could get into tree planting which is keeping Grimsby active so um, that's my thought. Sure some of that's going through the Grimsby Green group as well which again uh, Bruce McKenzie is also a part of that one but definitely we can keep you in the loop because uh, trees and shade and all that make the park spaces, right? So certainly there is the argument that there's a green stream to it, but there is that functional use of the park as well. So I'm um, happy to hear ideas that you have around that as well. Thank you. Oh, Anne, yes, I see, Anne. Well, <clears throat> I mean, Sarah's talking about <clears throat> buying, buying trees and planting trees, something they do in St. Catharines. <clears throat> Excuse me, I lost my voice. <clears throat> Something they do in St. Catharines when they purchase the trees is they they have a source for a very good price for native trees and they offer them to the public at a reasonable price. And that also puts more trees in the town and in the city. I'm just wondering if you've thought about that because, because you've obviously got the contacts for good native trees and you're buying them in a large quantity. It might, it might be a nice idea to offer to Grimsby residents who would like to buy any of these native trees through the town and plant them. So I can say, yes, that is something we're looking at. Again, that's really something we're looking at with the green committee, but I do get, get the crossover. Um, so a lot of municipalities will do a program, as you said, where they'll subsidize a piece of the um, a cost of the tree, because as much as it's great to put all of them, a lot of trees in parks, it's also great to have residents take care of them and have them in their areas as well. So we haven't worked out full logistics on that, but the hope is to do some sort of tree planting program that will involve residents. And I've actually already had calls from several <laughs> who are interested in doing this. So I think we did see some pretty good uptake, which is good. Thank you. Are we done? 
No more, no further questions. Yell if I'm missing. Next meeting, Active Grimsby meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, April 21st at 6.30 and we'll do it electronically again, I guess, maybe even smoother. There's no further discussion. Uh, we can adjourn the meeting. Any, anything further? <laughs>